2021. Psalm 121. And it is way past my bedtime. So we're going to get in and get out. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Verse 8 reads, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thank you, you may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk tonight about living under God's watch care. Living under God's watch care. The superscription to this psalm tells us that it is a song of degrees. Psalm 120 through Psalm 134 are psalms, are songs of degrees. A song of degree or a psalm of degree is a psalm that Jewish worshipers would sing as they made their way to Jerusalem to participate in the three great annual festivals of their culture. The Feast of Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. This is a pilgrim song. It bespeaks the dangers of the journey and of the help God provides to the people along the way. Right. On the eve of another year, I would remind us tonight that we too are pilgrims. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11 calls us sojourners and pilgrims. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 13 says, we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Our pilgrimage starts at birth and ends at death. That's our natural pilgrimage. But as believers, our pilgrimage begins when we accept Christ as our Savior and even after death when we leave this world because while we are here, we are pilgrims passing through this barren land. We are strangers on our way somewhere. This world is not our home. Verse number one, which says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, is not a declaration, but rather a cry of despair. Because in those hills are hidden dangers. 
dangers lurk in those hills ready to pounce upon the unwary traveler. And so the pilgrim asks and answers his own question. I look to the hills. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. But my eyes stretch beyond the hills. Because my help does not come from those hills. Where does my help come from? He answers his own question. My help comes from the Lord. As pilgrims, as strangers in this land, on our way to another place, while we are here, we need somebody to watch over us. We need somebody to take care of us. We need somebody to guide us. We need somebody to show us the way. Because we are pilgrims. We are travelers. And we are not always aware of hidden danger. I don't care how much you think you know. I don't care how smart you think you are. Except the Lord guide us. Except the Lord hold us. Except the Lord keep us. Your money can't keep you. Uh, your burglar alarm can't keep you safe. The police can't keep you safe. Except the Lord keep the city. I wish I had a Bible reading. Uh, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. We need somebody to hold us when our hair turns gray. We need somebody to protect us when we can't see what danger is lurking in the hills. Don't put your trust in your things. Don't put your trust in your health. Don't put your trust in your money. Don't put your trust in your career or your degree or your friends or your family. Because all of the aforementioned will fail you. You need somebody. And tonight I want to invite you. If you don't know who this somebody is, before this church service is over, I want to invite you to get in touch with, to know personally this person who can watch over us. I want to show us in this text the source of our help. Verse 2 says, my help comes from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. The psalmist knew that his help would not come from those hills. In the day this psalm was written, the hills belonged to places of idolatry and false religion. The writer knows that he will not find help in anything that is false. And everything that is not God is false. Uh, youth is false. Handsome looks, a beautiful smile, a brilliant mind, all of those things are false. And if you trust in them, they'll let you down. I wish I had somebody to help me. Some of us here have tried just about everything we could think of to bring us satisfaction and contentment only to realize that it was fool's gold. False. Temporary. Impermanent. Worthless. As a matter of fact, the preacher in the book of Ecclesiastes says it's vanity. I wish I had a witness here. Vanity of vanities. All of it is vanity. It's meaningless without a hope in Christ. Five times in this psalm, five times 
the psalmist identifies his helper as the Lord. The word Lord in the text is the Hebrew Yahweh. This is the covenant name of the God who identifies himself as the self-existent, eternal, unchanging God who is over all, controls all, and is all in all. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can even ask or think according to the power that is at work in us that's the God who's taking care of us Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 12 says who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand measured heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth with a measure weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance that God is the God who is the source of our help when life turns on me I don't need a God that I can carry When the doctors can't find out what's wrong with me, I don't need a God that I can put in my pocket. A God that I can drive, a God that I can marry, a God that I can live in, a God that I can wear. Those things are false, temporary, and impermanent. I need a God who rules the heavens and the earth watching over me. He is the center and the circumference. He's the subject and the verb of the Christian religion. He is God, very God. He is the eternal now. He's God by himself. He's Yahweh. He's Elohim. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Nisi. Everything I need, he supplies because he is the source of my help. Those of us here who know that have come to learn how to lean on that. For many of us in this church tonight, 2014 has been a test. Uh, some of us here tonight have gone through some serious trials that a lesser person would have given up. But you know that you know that you know who is the source of your help. That's why you can keep coming to church when you're broke. You can keep raising your hands when you don't know which way to turn. You can keep giving God praise when your enemies are on your trail. Because you know that your help doesn't come from the hills. My help, come on help me say that. My help. I, I know where my help comes from. My help doesn't come from Washington, D.C. My help doesn't come from HISD. My help doesn't come from Governor Perry. My help comes from the Lord. And no matter what man can do to me, my help comes from the Lord. No weapon sown against me. shall be able to prosper. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. 
of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, just before they got to me, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup just runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy. Somebody ought to help me right here. But just keep on following me all the days of my life. And when it's all over, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He's the source of my help. And then in verses 3 and 4, as I heard, I want you to see not only the source of our help, but the scope of our help. Verse 3 says, He will not suffer even your foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, check this out. Look at this. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The scope of our help. He helps those who slip. And if I'm not mistaken, some of us in here tonight in 2014 slip now, now, I'm not talking to you who, who, who trying to act like you don't know what I'm talking about I, I'm not talking to you with spiritual amnesia I'm talking to those of us in here who got some skeletons in the closet this year I don't mean 30 years ago. I mean we've done some slipping this year and the Lord kept on blessing you. You slip and he caught you. He could have let you been found out. But he caught you. 
Anybody here glad about that tonight? My steps were almost gone. My feet had well nigh slipped when I considered how the wicked prospered and the righteous suffered. But then I went in the sanctuary and every time I slip, I come to church. Somebody missed that. You can slip and still sing in the choir. You can slip and still preach. You can slip and still pray and teach Sunday school because God will catch you when you belong to him. I'm glad my salvation is not in some of you church people's hands. I'm glad my hope is not in the hand of some of you folk here at this church. Because mean as some of y'all looking right now, you look like you never made any mistakes. But there's about 150 of us in here right now who can testify I've slipped. I've slipped. Not only did I slip, but I fell. But he was right there. Have I got a witness? He was right there to pick me up. He will, he will not suffer your foot to be moved. He keeps those who slip and then he keeps those who sleep. Because there was a time I should have been awake. I was sleeping. I should have been t paying attention to it. I, I wouldn't have slipped if I had been paying attention. Somebody ought to help me here. Because if you slip, soon you'll sleep. That, 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 that's a short distance between slipping and sleeping. That, that's, that's just one vowel that separates slip from sleep. I wish I had time to stay right there. But thank God, even when I'm sleeping, he's wide awake. Even when I'm not paying attention, he's looking out for me. Let me see if I can make this make sense. You ever been, you ever been driving sleepy? And, and, and you go about five miles and you get to a point and don't remember how you got there. Somebody ought to help me preach it. You got there not because you're a good driver. He, <laughs> he was keeping you. He, he, he had his hand on the steering wheel. While you slept, he stayed awake. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. I said, aren't you glad about that? Yeah. When folk are lying on you, just go to sleep. God will take care of your enemy. When it looks like your problems are about to overwhelm you, go to sleep. God will keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind. Brothers and sisters, I've determined. Since God is up all night, it doesn't make sense for me to be up all night. Whatever I can't handle, I've learned how to put it in God's hand. Have I got a witness here? I, and I'm talking about some problems. There's some persons here tonight who's got some stories. They've got some, some real, real frightening stories to tell about how life turned them upside down but they still went to sleep and got up the next morning and you might have still had the same situation but you felt better about it because when you put it in God's hands you can stop worrying about it 
Uh, if you're going to worry, then don't pray. And if you're going to pray, then don't worry. God can work it out. I, I, want, I want to encourage somebody in here tonight. Whatever you're going through right now, this too will pass. God will make a way for you. God will protect you. God will keep you from slipping. And when you go to sleep, he'll stay up to take care of your situation. Now when you look at the text, the image changes from a pilgrim to a soldier. From one who is marching to one who is fighting. The imagery changes from the walk of the Christian to the warfare of the Christian. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. Now, now, now listen to me. It's, it's, the imagery changes from a pilgrim to a soldier. From one who is marching to one who is fighting. From the walk of the believer to the warfare. The Lord is your keeper. In the fight, the soldier in that day had a sword and a shield. Uh, the, the sword was in his right hand. And the shield was in his left hand. The shield could protect him on the left side, which left his right side unprotected. So he had a shield on the left, but he was exposed on the right. So God comes along and becomes a shade, a shield on your right hand. So that now no part of you is exposed. Oh, brothers and sisters. Oh, he, 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 he protects us from our enemy. He, he protects us on our right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. In that day, the soldier was concerned about sunstroke and moonstroke. Sunstroke had to do with heat that attacked the physical body. That was conditions from the outside bearing on the soldier's body. And moon stroke. They believed in that day and up into current days. They believed that a person's mind was affected by the moon. By the lunar system. The sun is the solar system. The moon is the lunar system. And when there was a full moon, they believed that the moon, the lunar system, affected a person's mind, thus giving us our word, lunatic. Because they thought your moods were affected by the moon. The sun struck you from the outside in. The moon struck you from the inside out. But God took care of all of that so that the sun wouldn't strike you in the day and the moon wouldn't mess up your mind at night. Somebody ought to help me preach it. 
the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but spiritual to the pulling down the tearing down of stronghold and the devil will attack your body and your mind but when you're under God's watch care our brothers and sisters we never know where our attacks will come from sometimes we find ourselves attacked in areas where we are weak because whatever you count on as your strength God will ultimately demonstrate that that's your weakness the prophet Elijah is renowned for his courage but he ran from Jezebel Moses is known for his meekness but he got angry and struck the rock and missed the promised land Abraham was the father of the faithful but he told Sarah to lie when we get to Egypt and tell him you're my sister when you're really my wife Whenever you, take, whenever you think you are strong, whenever you think you are standing, take care lest you fall. Because none of us is as strong as we think we are. He protects us from the enemy. He protects us from the elements. That's the source of our help. That's the scope of our help. But I'm through now. I want to talk to us a minute about the strength of our help and then I'm going to leave you alone. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve my soul. He shall preserve my going out and my coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The longer I worship him, yeah. the longer I praise him, yeah. the longer I walk with him, yeah. the longer I let him be my guide, yeah. the longer I let him shepherd me, he protects me from the enemy within yeah. and the enemy without. All the stuff you've been through, the devil thought he had taken you out. All the stuff you were up against, a normal person would have caved in. But here you are. I and mean, in about three minutes, about to cross over in the 2015, and you're still standing. You're going to help me close this, won't you? I'm going to close this little message with the title I wanted to give it. I'm calling this little sermon tonight, Under God's Watch Care, Living Under God's Watch Care. But I was torn between this subject and another subject, Living in God's Witness Protection. That's how I'm going to close. That's how I'm going to close this little sermon. I'm calling it living under God's watch care. But I wanted to call it living in God's witness protection. Uh, I watch Hawaii 5 and Blue Bloods and Law and Order and Goodfellas uh, and The Godfather. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? <laughs> And, and when somebody turns state's evidence to testify for the prosecution, uh, they give them a new identity. I wish I had help to close here. They say, I'm going to testify, but you got to protect me. And then once they testify, they are put in the witness protection program. And in the witness protection program, 
you're given a new name. You're given a new identity. Somebody ought to help me close here. And, and, and everywhere you go, you are protected. You have a new name. You have a new life. New surroundings. Because you've testified on behalf of the prosecution. Well, I've been running for Jesus a long time. And he's put me in the witness protection program. He said, if you testify on my behalf, I'll give you a new name. I'll give you a new identity. I'll change your whole way of living. Is there anybody here with me in the witness protection program? I am a witness that God is good. I said I am a witness that God will open doors. God will make a way. He'll put food on your table. He'll put clothes on your back. I am a witness. He'll heal your sick body. He'll put money in your pocket. Is there any other witnesses here in the program tonight who's got a new name written in glory? Is there anybody here not ashamed to be a witness? If the Lord open doors for you you ought to help me testify if the Lord been good to you you ought to help me testify if the Lord made a way for you don't be ashamed to be a witness if you in the witness protection program then the devil can't do you no harm then you ought to come on and help me witness to somebody. Help me tell somebody, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. He's good, children. He's good tonight. Here we are in another year already. It's already 2015. Some people started in January. But they didn't make it until now. Here we are tonight in a brand new year. God has crossed us over. If the Lord is good and you know he is, why don't you grab somebody? Not just anybody. Not just anybody. I don't want you fooling with just anybody. I don't want you messing with just anybody. I don't want you cavorting with just anybody. Grab somebody who look like they've been born again. Shake somebody's hand who look like they're glad to be in the service. One more time. Why don't you witness right now? He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Ah. Hallelujah. Somebody who was sick last year and the Lord kept you. Help me shout hallelujah. Somebody who's been taking care of your parents and the Lord gave you strength to do it. Help me shout hallelujah. Somebody who was broke last year. God paid your bills for you. Help me shout hallelujah. Somebody here didn't have a job last year. But you never lost your car. 
You never lost your house. You ate food every day. Come on, help me shout hallelujah. Why don't you grab somebody? Tell them you don't know. Like I know. What the Lord. What the Lord. 